Hey, hi friends. In this series, I wanted to start a tutorial on recommender systems. So let's get started. What are essentially recommender systems? Recommender systems are essentially algorithms using which a website or any application can promote things to users which he may be interested in and eventually he may buy. Or if he does not buy, it at, it at least increases the engagement of the user with the website. Let's take an example. For example, if you go to Amazon.com and you're looking for a book on calculus, Amazon immediately spits out certain recommendations on the calculus books by other authors. So you may take a look at those books and compare the user reviews, and then you may decide to buy something else. Similarly, you can also recommend certain books by the same author, but on different topics. And you may be interested in them, and if you decide to buy those other books, then it will increase the revenue for Amazon. Some websites such as YouTube, they promote other similar websites, sorry, other similar videos to you so that you may watch them and it will increase the user engagement. So that is basically a recommended system for you, an algorithm that promotes things for you that you may be interested in for buying or for looking or for whatever that you're interested in essentially. So how many types of recommended system are there? Well, there are two types essentially. You may hear about many, many different uh, variations of these, but essentially there are two types. One is called collaborative filtering and one is called content-based filtering. So in collaborative filtering, what happens is that in the larger database, for example, the one you're looking at right now on the screen, from this database, you find out users, that is the customers, those are mentioned in the column from B to O, similar looking customers. And those similar customers rank all the movies. So you do crowd ranking and then you pick out the five or six or seven or 10 or whatever highest ranked movies and recommend to the user. So let's look at an example and let's look at the manual calculation also. So here, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. So here I have transformed this database into the similarity score of all the customers. So how does it work? I have used the correlation and correlation is a very powerful tool to measure the similarity between different customers. You may also use the Martino distance. You may use Euclidean distance. You may use Manhattan distance, but we're going to use correlation. And if you understand one, you understand everything. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use three functions. I'm going to use correlation. I'm going to use index. and I'm going to use match function. So what match function does here, you can see is that it picks out customer one. It goes back to database. It reads the customer one label in the entire array here and then picks out the column. So customer one is in column B. So here I'm going to find a correlation between customer two and customer one. So it picks out the column that represents customer two and it also picks out the column which represents customer one, which is this column. And then it's just going to calculate correlation. So this is what I've done here and I've just copied the formula all the way down. If you're interested in knowing how the formula works, just stop at the point in the video where I click on the formula and go through it and you will figure out how this work. So once we have calculated the correlation score, what we have to do is to go to the next step, which is to calculate the unique rank of every movie based on how every other similar customer ranks it. So here what we have done is we have used some product. So basically what some product does is that it takes the entire distance. So I'm going to rank the movies for customer two. So let's say customer two is browsing my website and I want to recommend movies for him. So I find out that how customer two is similar to all the customers using this column, sorry, using this row. And then I'm going to multiply the entire row with the ranking of all these customers of movie one, which is something here movie one. So here all the customers have ranked this movie one. So if you multiply all the score together, we get a cumulative score. And we just copy the formula all the way down and you get the score for all the movies based on similar users. And again, how does the formula work? You have to stop at the point in the video where I show the formula and just take a look at it. And if you don't understand, go back to go back online and uh, look at the formula. So now here you have different scores for different movies. And now if you want to recommend these movies to a customer two, then you just pick out the ones which have highest scores. So you will pick out movie 14, you will pick out movie five, you will pick out movie two, you will pick out movie 12 or movie nine. So probably based on this algorithm, the customer two will click one of these and would like to watch and hence will increase revenue for whatever the website is. 
So that is one way to summarize collaborative based filtering. It works in two steps. First, you calculate the similar users from the big database. And then you do a crowd ranking of all the movies, and then you recommend the movies which are which have the highest ranking. So let's go back to another type of recommended systems, which are content-based filtering. Content-based filtering are essentially a bit different from collaborative filtering, which you have already figured out. That's why there's a different branch altogether. What so in content-based filtering, you look at this kind of database. So look at the difference. In the database for collaborative filtering, you had you had customers on the columns, and in content-based filtering, you have the movies on the columns. That essentially does not make a lot of difference because you just have to transpose the table and you'll get the same thing. But why I have recorded them in this way is because I wanted to highlight that the focus in collaborative filtering is on the users, how similar are users to each other. But the focus on content-based filtering is on the movies. That is how similar the products are to each other. And essentially, that's the reason why they're different. So you do the similar thing in content-based filtering also. You calculate the similarity score of all the movies based on how customers have ranked them, again, using the correlation. And here again, you can use many other forms such as Euclidean distance, Manhattan distance, or Tomatino distance. So here is a similar formula. I'm just going to drag the formula all the way to column V, and then I'm going to click the top, the bottom row, and it copies all the way down. So this is the similarity score of the movies. And then what I'm going to do is to rank the movies for a customer. So let's say I'm going to rank it for customer one. And the formula here is that I'm going to figure out that how a customer one has liked all the movies. And this is the complete database of customer one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the similar stuff. I'm going to do a sum product and I'm going to calculate how movie one is similar to all the movies by just copying this row and selecting the rank of every movie as per customer one. And there I go. And immediately I have a score here. And I'm going to do the same stuff. And this was for movie one. So I'm going to do the same stuff for movie two, movie three, movie four. And whatever is the highest score, I will promote that to customer one. So that is content-based filtering. Now, I'm not going to do the entire thing for you because you have already seen how it works for collaborative filtering. But what is interesting here is the difference between these two. So just to recap, in collaborative filtering, it's the customers who are similar. And in content-based filtering, it's the movies or the items which are similar. And as you can imagine, that in some cases, content-based filtering is better. And what are those cases? Those cases are essentially the cases where you do not have a lot of data. The reason is that even when you do not have a lot of data, movie one and movie two and movie three are not going to be very different from each other. But if you do not have a lot of data, then customer one and customer two similarity can be completely out of line. So when you are deciding between any two models, a very important factor is learnability. If your model can learn from small data, though it may not be very efficient when you get a lot of data set, but still for the moment, a model which performs badly on very large data sets but learns well on small data sets may be useful for you because you have small data sets for the moment. So when you have sparse data set, then content-based filtering can be a very good idea because as I just explained, that movie one is not going to be very different from movie two, even when you get a lot of data set. But it may not be very accurate with large data sets. But when you get very rich data set, that is opposite of the sparse, where you have all the columns and rows filled, then you may want to switch to collaborative filtering. There's a subtlety here which I have not mentioned. What happens if a lot of these movies' rankings are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0? That is not a lot of movies have been watched by customer one. Then what do you do? Well, then you will have to do something called normalization, which means that you will have to scale down your scores by only the ratings which the customer has given, which I'm going to talk about here, but this was a general idea. So to recap, 
recommend a system for algorithms which allow you to spit out things for the users which he may be interested in, which allows to make money for the sites or for whatever application is running in the background. And there are two kinds, content-based and collaborative. For sparse data set, go ahead with content-based filtering, but as your data set gets richer, move to collaborative filtering. So this is the entire theory. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.